Hello and welcome to the final episode of 2017. This week we will have our Star Wars special getting you all caught up on the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Taz Huggins, and let's start this show off with some movie news. May the 4th is Star Wars Day. Another franchise in the Disney house is beginning the end of their universe that day. Avengers Infinity War released its first look at the film with a trailer. The film culminates 10 years of cinematic stories to a climactic battle with the mad titan Thanos and his henchmen. Fun isn't something one considers when balancing the universe. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. Enough with that non-Star Wars news. Let's get to why you are all here today. We're going to start the story with where it all began, chronologically. Here's Marley Gardner and Eli Stanley with episode one and two. Hi, this is Haley Southerd from Nerd Central, standing in for Eli and Molly. Today, I will be talking about Star Wars Episodes 1 and 2. Episode 1 focuses on the Trade Federation invading the planet of Naboo, and the introduction to the Chosen One, the one who's supposed to bring balance to the Force, and the Jedi investigate the sudden appearance of the Sith. After being invaded by the Trade Federation, Queen Amidala, the youngest queen ever elected, escapes to Coruscant with the Jedi as her protectors. The Trade Federation ally with the Sith. In a struggle to leave Naboo, the party must travel to Tatooine for parts. There, they meet Anakin Skywalker, a boy pod racer Qui-Gon believes to be the Chosen One. When the party gets back to Coruscant, the Senate elects a new Chancellor. Qui-Gon's request for Anakin to be a Jedi is denied, and the Queen decides to go back to Naboo. The movie ends in a fight between Naboo natives and the Trade Federation army. The Sith becomes the Chancellor, the Jedi fight the Sith, and peace is restored to Naboo. Anakin becomes a Jedi Padawan. Episode 2 focuses on the romance between Padme and Anakin, and the creation of a clone army, as well as the beginning of the Clone War. Ten years after following Episode 1, and after a failed assassination attempt, Senator Amidala returns to Naboo with Anakin as a bodyguard. Obi-Wan investigates the reason behind the assassination, bounty hunters Jango and Boba Fett, and the creation of a clone army for the Republic. Padme and Anakin's romance blossoms, and the movie ends with the first battle on Geonosis of the Clone Wars, and Padme and Anakin get married. On the technical aspect, the visual effects and the costumes were extremely detailed, and it probably took an incredible amount of time with what I imagine to be endless, endless or sleepless nights. The fight choreography and action sequence took months for the actors to be able to learn and perfect in order to look like natural movement and be able to pull off without any injuries. This is Haley Southerd from Nerd Central. Stay nerdy. Thanks, you two. The Princess of England will be stormtroopers in The Last Jedi. Be on the lookout for them, you know, after they let you know which one they are. Moving right along with our storytelling, here's Molly and Eli again with the Clone Wars. I'm Molly Gardner. And I'm Eli. Today we're going to talk about Star Wars The Clone Wars. Just a heads up, we're going off the knowledge we know. George Lucas continues his most popular franchise legacy with Star Wars The Clone Wars, a computer animated 3D film that takes place between Star Wars Episode 2 II and 3, the first ever animated feature from Lucasfilm Animation. This action-packed space adventure follows the heroic Jedi Knights as they attempt to maintain order and restore peace during a time of monumental galactic strife. Following the outbreak of the Clone Wars, Jedi Grandmaster Yoda assigned the young Ahsoka Tano to be the Padawan learner to Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker, whom she joined in battle. Whereas Tano was eager to prove herself, Skywalker had a reputation for recklessness and they had a rather difficult start as master and apprentice. You're stuck with me, Sky Guy. <laughs> what did you just call me? <laughs> Don't get snippy with me, little one. Yet they worked together to rescue Rhoda, the son of crime lord Jabba, and returned Rhoda to his father, thus facilitating a crucial alliance between the Hutt clan and the Galactic Republic. Some major plot points in the TV show include Obi-Wan has a love interest, which is against the Jedi Code, which is one of the reasons Anakin went to the dark side. The other major plot point in the show is the making of the clone troopers in which Order 66 is planted into their brains. Jedi Master Sifo-Dyas 
instructed us to implant them during your growth cycle. When Order 66 was announced in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, The time has come. Execute Order 66. Yes, my lord. The clone troopers had nothing to do but obey the orders and kill all the Jedi. But Ahsoka stormtroopers found out about the Order 66 chip implanted in their brains and were able to take their chips out of their heads and they tried to warn the Jedi. Another plot point is that we find out that Darth Maul is not dead and he wants revenge after Obi-Wan Kenobi cuts him in half. For Nerd Central, I'm Molly Gardner. And I'm Eli Stanley. Thanks, you two. We'll be taking a short break, but first, here's Tyler with Episode 3 and Rogue One. What's happening, everyone? It's Tyler here again on Nerd Central. Moving right along with this week's special episode, I'll be taking a look at Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and Rogue One. So let's get started. Revenge of the Sith is the sixth entry of the Star Wars series and is a sequel to The Phantom Menace and The Attack of the Clones. The film is the third and final installment of the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Directed by George Lucas, the film is one of the darkest episodes within Star Wars and focuses on how Anakin Skywalker becomes the notorious Darth Vader. The film begins three years after the onset of the Clone Wars. The Jedi are spread across the galaxy, leading a massive war against the Separatists. The Jedi Council sends Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi to eliminate the notorious General Grievous, leader of the Separatist army. Meanwhile, Jedi Anakin Skywalker grows close to Palpatine, the Supreme Counselor of the Galactic Republic, and unknown to the public, a Sith Lord. Their deepening friendship threatens the Jedi Order, the Republic, and Anakin himself. Throughout the movie, we see Anakin slowly start to change his morals. Towards the beginning of the movie, he finds out that he's going to be a father as his wife, Padme, is pregnant. Shortly after the news, Anakin experiences a vision in which Padme dies while giving birth. He shares the vision with her but promises that he won't let it become reality. As his friendship with Counselor Palpatine strengthens, the Counselor tricks Anakin into believing there's a power he can possess that will save his wife from certain death. In fear of losing Padme, Anakin decides to join the dark side as Palpatine's apprentice and is given the name Darth Vader. The final sequence of the film shows Palpatine and Vader overseeing a construction of the Death Star, which leads us into the next movie, Rogue One, taking place about two decades after the events of Revenge of the Sith. Directed by Gareth Edwards and released in 2016, Rogue One is the first installment of the newly minted anthology films, which means it's a film that is tied to the Star Wars saga, but is not one of the episodes. The film follows a group of rebels on a mission to steal the plans of the Death Star, the Galactic Empire superweapon. By the end of the film, the group sacrificed their lives to retrieve the plans and transmit them back to Princess Leia's ship. That'll lead us into episode 4, but I'll leave that one for you, Tez, and that's all the time I have. Thanks for listening, this has been Tyler, and we will be right back with more Nerd Central after this break. Welcome back to the Star Wars special, and you just watched episode three and Rogue One. Now we can get to the good Star Wars movies. My producer wrote that for me. But first, Ryan Johnson, director of The Last Jedi, will be making a new trilogy for the Lucas films. Here's the catch. There will be no Skywalkers. I'm hoping for a Yoda trilogy myself. You know, more of his backstory. Now allow me to talk about episode four and five. And this is Tez Talks on Earth Central. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Tez Talks. And this is a special episode. This is a Star Wars themed episode. But today, I'll be speaking about episodes four and five. Let's start with episode four, A New Hope. Basically, this movie is about Luke Skywalker being accompanied by Obi-Wan Kenobi. And they set off to save the galaxy from a world destroying Death Star and rescue Princess Leia. This is all made possible with a cocky pilot known as Han Solo and a Wookiee with his Chewbacca and two droids R2D2 
and C3PO. And they set off to battle against the dark side corrupted Darth Vader. Now this was a decent movie prequel, if you may. Now, I, I would honestly rate this movie a solid 3.97 out of 5, and that's simply because I'm a Star Wars fan. In the next episode, episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Now, this episode, the Rebels get overpowered by the Empire on their new base. Luke Skywalker goes into a sort of a isolated state as he goes through Jedi training with Yoda. Spoiler alert, Yoda dies. Almost cried when he died, but it's cool. It's cool. Luke's new friends from the previous episode find shelter and a safe haven from a suspicious ally known as Lando Carizion. Now he's suspect, but he turns it all around when he goes to save them. But enough spoilers, check out these two movies that you haven't, which I think is a shame because these movies have been out for a few decades now. I need you to catch up. But I will rate episode 5 a solid 4 out of 5 because I'm a fan. Star Wars is great. And my favorite all-time Star Wars movie is episode 2, Attack of the Clones. But that's another episode of Taz Talk that you have to just stay tuned for. But other than that, that will conclude this episode of Test Talks. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Thanks, me. I stand by episode two being my favorite. A little bit of book news for you guys. The new installment of the Thrawn books will have Darth Vader sharing the cover with the title character. And just look. Look at that good looking cover. Now let's finish off the saga with Zach Brown telling the story of episode six and seven. With Star Wars 8 less than a month away, I felt it was time to talk about my personal favorite Star Wars films, Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, and Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, debuted in theaters in 1983. After the events of Episode 5, we see the gang of Luke, Chewbacca, and Lando go to Jabba the Hutt's palace and try to rescue Han Solo from his Carbonite prison. They rescue Han Solo, and their next mission is to help the Rebel Alliance try to destroy the Galactic Empire's second Death Star, and in the process, try to kill the Emperor, who is on board overseeing the construction. We see Luke battle his father and the Emperor on the Death Star. The Emperor is trying to get Luke to turn to the dark side and kill his father and take his place. Luke refuses and in the process gets tortured by the Emperor, and is eventually saved by his father, Darth Vader, who kills his master, the Emperor, by throwing him in a reactor. Darth Vader is dying after he was electrocuted by the Emperor, and his last request is for Luke to take his mask off so he can see his son with his own eyes, then he dies. The Death Star is destroyed, and the Galactic Empire is destroyed for now. The next movie takes place 30 some years later, with Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. The movie debuted in 2015, we see a new evil rise with the First Order led by Kylo Ren. They are trying to destroy the New Republic and their enemies, the Resistance, led by General Leia or Princess Leia as she is known in the original trilogy. We see the rise of a new character named Rey. We don't really know much about Rey, but we know that she discovers her knowledge of the ways of the Force. We also see new characters arise and a skilled Resistance pilot named Pope Dameron, a former Stormtrooper and Finn, and a new droid BB-8. The new group of fighters go against Kylo Ren and the First Order, and successfully destroy the newest incarnation of the Death Star-like destroyer called the Star Killer Base. After these events, we see Rey go and find the only true Jedi left in Luke to ask him to help the Resistance fight Kylo Ren, his former apprentice, and his nephew. The film ends there and we'll pick up at that exact moment in the next episode in the Star Wars universe, Star Wars Episode 8: The Last Jedi, in theaters December 15th. This has been Zach Brown for Nerd Central. May the Force be with you. Thanks, Zach. We will take a quick commercial break. When we come back, 
I'll be sitting down with Nerd Central producers to talk about what we want to happen in The Last Jedi. Stay with us. Welcome back to Nerd Central. I'm now joined by the producer of this show, Andy Johnson. Andy, let's talk about The Last Jedi. Let's do it. What are your expectations? I'm, I'm hoping for a really, obviously I'm a Star Wars fan, so I'm really hoping for a really good movie. Mm -hmm. I, I feel as if they, they could have maybe a, a, a stronger feel if you hold back some to make me want to go and see the next one. Exactly. Now what do you expect of uh, the, the Rey character? I'm hoping that like they grow her character. People think that she's a Mary Sue and that kind of stuff, but she grew up on a desert planet mm -hmm. you know, defending for herself, so she you know, picked up on that kind of stuff. Um, I just played the, uh, the new video game Battlefront 2, okay. and they have, a new, uh, they have a new campaign for that, mm -hmm. and it's considered canon. Mm -hmm. So it takes place right after the Return of the Jedi and you see the destruction of the, of the Death Star. During the uh, campaign, your main character and one of her squad mates defects to the Rebellion, and then they are part of the Battle of Jakku from, you remember from Force Awakens? Yeah. From the trailers you've seen, trailers, like, yeah. you saw like the crashed starships and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. like Rey was rummaging through that kind of stuff. Right. And they both were on that battle. Like, they, they were there on the battle, and then they both end up together. And, and then it fast forwards three decades and Kylo Ren is trying to find Luke because that's, you know, that's, that's the plot of episode seven. Okay. And one of the, their other squad mate that didn't defect to the, to the rebellion mm -hmm. says to her husband that they have a daughter. And if you piece it together, because they're on Jakku and not the main character, but her husband is British. So people are trying to piece together that because Ray right. is British, okay. they kind of piece together that that may be her father and mother. Maybe British as well. Okay, I, I, I see the little mystery. You, yeah. Inspector Gadget. If people who play the game, like myself, mm -hmm. not a lot of people do that, by the way. It, a lot of haters in that movie, mm -hmm. in that game or something. But those people, like the people that actually played the game, and you know, they, they show like a flashback or something like that of mm -hmm. their faces. People will understand, okay, that's who they are. The people who get it, they're just like, mm -hmm. I get it, it makes sense. Yeah, Easter egg, so yeah. you can put it together yourself. Yeah, exactly. Or speculate. Tell me what you think about uh, Leia, the General Leia. Yeah, General Leia, honestly, because of the untimely passing of Carrie Fisher, mm -hmm. I, they, they have already announced that she's not going to be in episode nine. I'm hoping that in the trailer, you saw that Kylo Ren was going after a ship and it cut back and forth to Kylo and Leia and you see him just about to pull the trigger to destroy mm -hmm. her. And I'm hoping that actually doesn't happen because I don't, I honestly do not want her to die. She goes and rules over the Republic and the Resistance, but you don't, you, you still know that she's out there, but she's not dead. Like you can, you can say like in episode nine, like they name drop, it's like princess, like General Leia mm -hmm. ordered us to do this. Like that's, that's what I want. Like I want them to keep her around. Keep her image alive. Yes. Through spirit. Yeah. Not seen, but heard of. Yes, exactly. Right. But not dead. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Tim, what do you expect from Luke? Well, at the end of episode seven, we see that Luke is now taking on Rey as mm -hmm. an apprentice. And if you see in the trailers from, from The Last Jedi, you see that Rey is very powerful. Right. And, um, he sa and Luke says in the trailers that I've seen this power once before. Right. I don't, you know, I wasn't scared then, I am now. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the international trailer, you find out that it's actually Kylo that he's talking about. Well, since you mentioned Kylo Ren, let's yeah. segue right into Kylo, yeah, Kylo Ren. Ren. What, what do you expect of him being so strong and within his movies? The trailers for Last Jedi, you see Rey saying, I need someone to help me in my place, you know, to find my place in all this. And then you see Kylo offering his hand. I believe that's a misdirection. Behind Rey, there's kind of like rubble and fire and that kind of stuff. And then behind Kylo, there's not much, but there's some, there's some sparks. 
after Starkiller Base got destroyed in, in The Force Awakens, he has to go back to his boss right. and explain what just happened. A his, report. His, yeah, well, he's gonna, it's more than a report. It's more mm -hmm. like he has to blame somebody for the destruction of the giant weapon that took 30 years to build. Mm -hmm. I honestly do not believe he can, he can be redeemed because he killed his father. He went onto this big platform and you, 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 you drew him out there and I mean, you're you're obviously going to kill him. Like mm -hmm. you you were gonna you were gonna kill him anyway. So he's at fault. Yeah, if they redeem him, it better be damn good. Absolutely. Like, it better be like like he is at fault. Like he's a secret agent or so, like he's a he's a double agent or something mm -hmm. like that. Like in in the first order, if he does that, mm -hmm. then that's then I'm then I I would be okay with it if they something significant. Him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Being that you are such a big fan of Star Wars and yeah. the entire universe, how many times do you plan on watching it in theaters? I'm planning on seeing it at least eight or nine times, maybe ten times. My I'm going to see it a lot. Just like, keep going up yeah, on numbers. Be at the hangar. I'm going to be at my hometown theater. I'm going to mm -hmm. be at a, you know, at the Des Moines theaters and that kind of stuff. Like, I'm going to be everywhere. I'm going to give everybody their money. It's like, this, yeah. this film deserves this money. How many different formats do you plan on watching it in at the theater? Obviously in just 2D. Mm -hmm. and that's probably the first time I'm going to see it, so I don't have all of those gimmicks in like the, the 3D or the IMAX and that kind of stuff. When I go back to my hometown, I live close to Des Moines, so they have an IMAX dome theater, which is showing it in 70 millimeter. It's like the best way of watching a movie, and it'll like fill the screen, that kind of stuff. My, unfortunately, my hometown does have 3D, but it's not the best 3D. So I'm thinking about going to a suburb of Des Moines and go see it in 3D. These I live off of. Right? At the beginning of the show, May the 4th is Star Wars Day. Right. But everybody that knows me and, and all my, par and my parents and everybody tells me, isn't every day Star Wars Day for you? Hey, I praise people that love the, the, love the prequels because you said yours is episode two of episode the favorite. Episode two, yes. Yeah. And that has, that has some good moments. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to deny it. I love, I love the Star Wars series and I love you know I love everything about it like except for Jar Jar. Jar Jar can go die if he wants to. Yeah you hear me Jar Jar. Other than that I always praise people it's like I love the prequels. I'm like good. I mean there are people there, there needs to be people out there that appreciate the prequels. You know when Christmas comes around most people watch Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. I watch the Star Wars trilogy. I watch I watch all Star Wars movies because mm -hmm. that's my Christmas now. Well thanks Andy. That's gonna do it for Nerd Central. Northwest Sessions is up next. You can watch Nerd Central and all of our other amazing shows on the KNWT YouTube page and follow Nerd Central on Twitter at nerd underscore central underscore TV. Follow KNWT on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you in 2018 and may the force be with you.